The Masurian Canal, formerly located in East Prussia and currently divided by the Polish-Russian border, was designed to connect forgotten and poverty-stricken southern part with wealthy northern area in order to exchange goods. It is resting quietly in the Masurian wild where no one has heard of it after 1945, as the original inhabitants were forced to flee their homes to be replaced by Polish migrants from eastern borderlands. Its construction has been only a part of the European movement of creating new waterways. However, its delayed construction because of political environment in which it is located will cause the canal to be a little bit late to the 19th century's canal age. However, the scale of the design structures show that if finished, it will be undoubtedly the biggest water enterprise yet. The height of some of its 10 water locks measure as much as even 30 meters. Across its modest 50 kilometers long route, it covers the height of over 100 meters. However, the canal's twisted timeline, marked by many wars and conflicts, has caused its own form to be forever cut in half, discontinued, left behind, only to be forgotten even by those who could still remember its construction. After original inhabitants of East Prussia were forced to leave, later generations of migrants can ask questions about the history of the Mazurian Canal. It is said that the third generation of migrants represent the third phase of a rite of passage. So by asking questions and exploration, they acknowledge what is found to be their adopted identity in the world, inhabited by their parents and grandparents. First generation of migrants won't ever build new identity over the newfound land. Second generation of migrants inherits lack of identity from their parents, and only the third generation of migrants is able to explore and ask about the world they live in. So what can be done about the Mazurian Canal? How can it help to build today's identity among the new generation of migrants? Through thorough analysis of the canal's connections with other ways of transport, its linear capacity and even perceptive assets, I have concluded that the best thing to do about the canal would be to do nothing. Though nothing would be enough only for a person who has spent time surveying, sketching, photographing and mapping the canal. How can this act of exploration be recreated for the other third generation migrants so they can acknowledge the canal's history themselves? I decided to connect all of the research values of the Masurian Canal to give its history a new layer. A layer of narrative architecture that can get all with it and maybe be even demolished along with it if the time comes. It can be also removed in order to recultivate the canal if that may ever even happen. The engaged tourism trail is supposed to deepen the cultural identity through the use of narrative architecture. The engagement of the observers has to be a result of the fact that each point of the trail is by far harder to achieve. The closer we are to the border of the country, the less people are able to continue the voyage. But always they are led along the path by the elements of narrative forms from which there are groups indicating different situations on the trail. Vertical forms symbolize the beginning or the end of the canal, or its continuation in places where it cannot be seen. Horizontal objects located across the canal indicate that it is interrupted or is not there at all. Surfaces show places in which the canal is present, but cannot be seen, for example when it is underground. These groups can be divided also into smaller ones, each of them can be built only to symbolize, or to connect, or to fulfill particular function like an observation tower or an educational pavilion. Form of these objects is derived from the architecture of water infrastructure of the Mazurian Canal. They're supposedly similar, strangely unfinished like the water locks, but they're wooden and local like the Prussian architecture. The way in which the project treats the relics of the old culture is a result of analysis and detailed thinking. Original idea to recultivate the waterway has changed in order to recultivate cultural identity formed around it instead. Ironically, what has been marked as a drawback of the canal has proven to be its potential. Maybe the best thing would be to do nothing about the Mazurian Canal at all. That's why the main point of this design 
is a minimal interference with it, because it doesn't need it. It needs an interest and care. Ambitious plans of recultivation of the canal are useless each time they are cancelled. But when the time comes that the canal can be recultivated, these structures can be demolished, and if not, they will fight away with the canal itself thanks to the natural succession. It is important to consider that any action taken on the canal is only a layer, a shutter in the long history not only of the canal, but also of the history of the Mazuran region, which we cannot demolish or forget, but simply should adopt, and adopt not as foreign, but as the history itself, just being there.